So this here is our poly tunnel, as they're often called, and that's due to the uh, poly plastic uh, that you put over the top of it. And there's no plastic on it, as you can tell, and there's not even any doors or anything. So at this moment in time, uh, there is no cover and we have reskinned it twice, i.e. the first time we put on the plastic it ripped because in storms it gets hit by things and then tends to rip. So we've reskinned it and then it ripped again and now we're ready to re-reskin it. So we're going to do it in a very particular way. Now normally poly tunnels are completely covered in plastic, both front, back, sides, and they just have a door for entering and leaving and so on. And the plastic is good because it provides a greenhouse effect, warms up the inside, all good. However, some animal farms have started using an alternated version. So they have the plastic for maybe four fifths of the roof, and this still provides the heating effect. But with animals, they're living, breathing, exhaling, you need airflow. So along the bottom here, you have a mesh, which allows an airflow of fresh air while still providing the heating effect. So this is what we're going to do. Not because we're going to keep livestock in it, but as well as a good airflow, it also prevents rodents from scratching their way in. So what we've had previously was we've had rats and badgers and other things have dug through the plastic to get to the vegetables inside, which does sound very odd, but we have had rats dig up potatoes. So it seems everybody loves spuds. But before we place a covering over the top, we want full access to the whole area. And that's why I've stripped everything out, including the doors and taken all the old plastic away. So in a normal year, you take your spade, you dig her in and you pull up the ground and then kind of break it up. And you're left with a kind of muddy patch, such as this here, which your new crop can then be planted in. The only problem is this ground is very tough and the area of the tunnel is quite large. So this year, because she's uncovered, we're actually going to plough it. Now you may think that actually sounds like a pretty easy idea, bada bing bada bomb, but no, it's not quite that easy. So first of all, the door is not very low, it's only maybe seven foot. Second of all, the sides taper down, so you can't really get in that close to the sides. And then she's not that wide, and there's all these metal bars in the way. So for a normal tractor, it would be quite difficult. However, with a Massey Ferguson 135 equipped with a twin furrow Ferguson ploy, the job should be manageable. The short wheelbase, short height and short length of the ploy combined with the short width of the vehicle and the short width of the ploy should make it manageable inside the tunnel space. So got the tractor and the ploy all set up, the ploy is fixed and I have it cleaned so it's nice and smooth. Now the ground is absolutely rock hard, but I couldn't do it earlier because about two weeks ago, or three weeks, yeah, two weeks really, the ground was solid mud. So here we are. Just about a bit. Okay, now in my defense, this is the first time I have used this apparatus to ply. So it does dig up the ground, I suppose, but as you can tell from this large lump that is almost inverted, it does kind of work. And then up here, you know, you can kind of see a bit of uh, digging upness. So it kind of works.
it is such a delight to me to see it work because look here look at that see that right there there is your track and it is inverted folded over look at that didn't make it quite the whole way start to dig in here kind of flipped it over but look that one worked so yes it does work So it's been a week since we ploughed and the ground actually looks better somehow despite not having done much to it but this giant hole. So what we've done is round the edges we've got ready and we've placed these concrete, uh, these are slats, uh, they kind of just form a bit of a boundary, we just have them there. So we have something firm as an edge and it looks good and we have it down this whole side, we still have to do these ones. We've done it right down that side and it just gives it a nice solid boundary and we've still got a few to do so what we'll do is we'll dig up the ground to then we'll add some extra dirt level it out and then just place these retaining slabs on the edges so we finished laying the concrete thingy majiggers all the way around and we have started doing the beams by started i mean we were halfway and we've also dug more and more and more and how these work is we basically just have two by fours and we've got a u-bolt fastening it to the frame and this is the height of our mesh so that our mesh will run from the timber down to the concrete for this portion So now that we have the timber the whole way around, you may or you may not be able to see, we've already done the mesh on this side. So we've got the mesh for this side and it's a pretty simple procedure. You just tack in the mesh at this post, wrap it the whole way around and we should have done verticals really to get it nice and tight but it's handy enough just doing it there, wrapping it the whole way around and there and then it's still stapled in along the top. But mainly crocodiles like African where alligators like South America and Florida. Florida and like Australia and stuff. So now that the mesh is on and the boards are on, the final thing to do is to cover it. And today is that day we are covering it today. So I've got the doors back installed. And as an added bonus, added some diagonal supports just to stop the doors sagging in that direction because there's no diagonals and they aren't even jointed together here. They just have wee brackets. So we've got our uh, battens around the whole edges ready so that when we pull over the plastic 
we can roll up the plastic in the battens and then nail them onto these here boyos and then that will have the plastic right over. So the thing is on the metal parts where the plastic comes in contact you have to put this spongy foam tape and this prevents direct contact between the metal and the plastic because the metal is heated up by the sun and can melt through the plastic so you do this and it prevents direct contact. Sleepy type guy always takes his time. Soon I know you'll be changing your mind when you've seen him use a gun. Boy, when you've seen him use a gun, he's the top of the West. Always cool, he's the best. He keeps alive with his car. He's the top of the West. Always cool. He's the and best. So there we have it. The tunnel is finally covered and completed. So it doesn't look too bad on the front, but as you can see, there's a lot of wrinkles and loose bits, but that's just because it's a semicircle and you can't get a rectangle to fit evenly on a semicircle. So the only way you could do it is to cut down these corners, which is a bad idea, so you don't do that. But along the side here, it actually looks pretty good. I would very much recommend not doing it with any wind, or I would more recommend doing it without any wind. So we did it with a tiny bit of wind, just a light breeze, and it was a nightmare trying to get it right because the wind just kept moving it. And we had to do it that day just to get it done otherwise we would have had to wait another two weeks so this side looks really good and as you can see we rolled the sticks this way so as the water runs down it just falls off and ground and then we have the mesh and we still need to fix it at the bottom trying to figure out the best way to do that but for now it's all right and then the blocks have a nice border the whole way around and if we come inside you can see the chickens which are who are living in here at the moment so hopefully in the next week or two we'll get it all uh, planted with stuff to grow and then that will be good. So we found in the past two days that the birds are flying in and then birds can't see mesh or plastic and so just keep ramming into it, ramming, ramming, ramming. We even opened the doors to let them out but they just keep ramming into the plastic so to prevent them getting in we've put mesh up along the tops of the doors which is the only place they can really get in because they can't really fit in between the doors or underneath the doors. So there we go, the tunnel is finally finished and as you can see we're already using it. We've got courgettes in the back, cucumbers here, tomatoes are going to go there and I'm already digging the holes for the potatoes so it's all ready to go and the mesh around the edges, I took some old tent pegs and rammed them in which has tied the mesh down kept out the birds, kept it all tight and it's pretty much done now so hopefully we'll come back in a few months and we'll have lots of veg, I don't think we'll have it, no, no fruits, pens, some people say cucumbers are fruit, 
Is it? Yeah, I would say cucumbers are fruits, not a vegetable. Who knows? Anyway, got other videos here if you'd like to see, and you can subscribe or whatever. And sure, put in the comments. Is cucumber a fruit or vegetable?